Yes. Our guest in this segment is Keith Lowry. Keith, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me on today. Great to have you with us, sir. So uh, your name, if we had Steve Stolifer on earlier today, your, your name at one point was being considered for county commissioner, same Keith Lowry? It was. Yeah. They had a vacancy because someone resigned, right. and uh, someone asked me, would you be willing to fill in until the election? I said, of course I'll be willing to fill in. That's my part of my duty as a citizen, so I put my name in. Yeah, and obviously that didn't work out, and we all know the drama that ensued after that, but you didn't put your name in to run for election for the county commission in the seats that are up now either. No, I didn't. I was just willing to fill in until they found someone who wanted to take the job permanently. That's cool. But you got other things to do, man. You're a busy yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my focus is on Jefferson County Community Ministries, and yeah. I'm happy to do whatever the citizens need me to do, but, but I'm not going to fight for uh, – uh, that's just not in my blood. My, sure. my focus is on the ministry. And, and was it three years you've been doing this now? Yes, three years. Three years. Yeah. Uh, that was went by pretty fast. You know, it's amazing how fast it goes by. Yeah. How, how many organizations are under your umbrella? We are sponsored by about 40 different faith-based organizations. Uh, I don't say churches because some of them, most are churches, but we have uh, support from the Jewish community, from the Arabic community, from Baha'i faith. So there's, there's a lot of different voices that we uh, have on our, our board. And, and Keith, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. I know we covered this previously when sure. you were on, but it's been a while, and it's a fascinating background. Well, I'm from California, where I was at police officer and detective, where we did have polyester uniforms. See? And when you lit a road flare, you had to be really careful. Mm -hmm. That's hot uh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so polyester on a hot day is hot stuff. Yep. Yeah. That stuff doesn't breathe well. And then uh, I was also at the time a reserve military naval officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, after 9-11, I got mobilized and moved out here. Uh, retired from the Navy after 27 years, active duty in part in the reserve. Uh, then I went to work for the federal government, and then I retired, and they asked me to come and be the executive director of Jefferson County Community Ministries. And you were very successful in your role at the Navy because, to this point, West Virginia has still not had a coastal invasion. So, good well, job. No, that's the Coast Perfect. Guard. That's the Coast Guard 100%. station that's protecting us there. I, I, I don't. I don't think you can lay that on the Navy. The, well, the, the Navy, you know, you know they, you know, they got to protect the uh, the you know the whole thing with the water. So, Mayor Trainer of Charlestown is a retired Coast Guard officer. Mm -hmm. So he and I have jokes about that all the time. I won't tell on the air what I say to him in person. It's a rivalry. There's, it's a rivalry between yeah. Coast Guard and Navy. Uh, what do you have coming up, Keith? So. This is our 41st year of doing business uh, and providing services for the homeless and those in need in our county. Uh, last year, we kicked off with a neighbor project to build a facility to house uh, homeless uh, in a permanent location. Uh, and it was so successful, we decided to have another one this year. And this year, it's called the Voices of Classic Soul. Mm -hmm. And all the proceeds are going to go to helping us help the neighbors in our community who need help. When, where, and how much? So it is going to be held Saturday, April 13th at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, tickets are scaled depending upon how far back you want to sit. It's at the Ranson Civic Center. Mm -hmm. So we have $25 seats, $50 seats, $75 seats, and $150 seats. How many does that place seat? Uh, we could put in 800 people. 800? Okay. Um, and then we also have sponsorships that we're looking for from corporate donors who want to sponsor. And how do you get tickets? Go online, jccm.us, and there's a little concert but uh, tab across the top. You hit that and it says, I want to purchase a ticket or I want to sponsor, and it walks you through it. jccm.us. What's the program? The program, it's called Voices of Classic Soul. So last year we had um, Landau Murphy Jr. come, mm -hmm. uh, and this year he came back and said, you know, I'd like to come back and do it again, but this time I want to bring <clears throat> some of the uh, voices that are still singing from classic groups like The Tops, The Four Seasons, The Temptations. So it's going to be a classic soul concert for two hours, and we're leaving plenty of room for people to get up and dance uh, and just enjoy some good 60s and 70s soul classics. Are they bringing their bands? And uh, they're the bringing a band, and uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and there are still some original members who are going to be uh, making an appearance in Ransom? Yes. And um, there, there will be, for those that choose to be, for the VIPs that come in and want to pay a higher price, there's going to be some opportunities to get autographs and uh, spend some time with them. Oh, you got the VIP section there, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, very nicely done. <laughs> and uh, what percentage of the, of, is it equally divided in, in, in uh, one third, one third, one third between the 100 the 50 and the $25 seats? Oh, I wouldn't think that. I I, I don't know. I, yeah. I can't answer that one. So it's, it's divided up so that we have bleacher seats in the back, and we have another section for the 25, and then another section for the 50, another section for the 75. And mm-hmm. The closer you get to the stage, the more expensive it gets, well, just like a regular concert. Be. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're not paying $10,000 like you would for a Springsteen concert. 10000 Oh, yeah. You go on. To the, the ticket sites, if you wanted to, when Springsteen was coming to Baltimore and D.C., you wanted to sit up front? I, I, I had my granddaughter go to a Swift concert, so I understand how that, that works. I can't even imagine how much those tickets cost, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, talk about the different ministries that you folks take care of in Jefferson County, Keith, and, and what the uh, demands are like right now. You know, it's interesting. Um, last year, two years ago, I think I came on your radio show, uh, and it's it's grown significantly in, in different ways. Um, we started out about, when I got there three years ago, we had about 1,800 clients coming through the door. This last year, we had over 4,500 clients coming through the door. Is that just because more people are aware of you, or has the need grown that drastically? I think it's both. People are becoming aware, and the need is growing. Um, we did some calculations and math, and basically we're serving about 8.8% of the population of Jefferson County. Um, we have 2,000 families that we're serving. And uh, it's, it's a huge crisis in many ways, both in, in people losing their jobs and, and not being able to afford their homes or their rent anymore, uh, to opioid addiction, to uh, mental health issues and psychiatric health issues. Um, so one of the biggest things that we did this last year was we had a grant last year to start mental health counseling and psychiatric medication management. And that has taken off um, our counselor is seeing about 25, 30 people a month, and our psychiatric nurse practitioner is seeing about six to 10 people a month. Um, And we're just bringing a lot of service to people because really someone who's homeless has many things that are that are issues with them. It's not, it could be trauma, it could be abuse, it could be um, um, just mental issues. So what we try to do is find out what are the issues that you need to have solved, and we bring in the experts to help solve it so they can come back and be self-reliant and contributing citizens again. What's the typical vector by which people find you? Um, We have people referred to us from our partners. We have about 70 different agencies that we're partnered with, uh, including Catholic Charities, uh, St. James Catholic Church, um, uh, the shelters uh, around the area. We also strongly... <clears throat> work with law enforcement. So people come to us from many different ways. Uh, and then, for instance, last, about th- four months ago, there was a lady who was just walking down Chestnut Hill Road, if you know where that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was in the middle of winter and she was freezing. And one of the neighbors saw her and said, hey, wh- what can I do? And she said, well, I just got kicked out of my house by my, my abusive husband and I have nowhere to go. So she immediately says, well, I know JCCM, give them a call. So she called, we picked her up, we got her taken care of, got her into a safe house, um, got her the counseling that she needed, got her a job, um, and now she's in her own apartment, she's got her kids back with her, and uh, just moving right along. So there's lots of interesting things that we do. Very well networked. Yes. Yeah, so you said there was 40 different ministries? 40 that different you? churches or, churches or faith-based groups that support us, yes. Okay, so that's financially they support you? Well, they, they support us financially with volunteers, with food, with clothing, um, and then support us in, in many other ways. Do you get any uh, grants from the state or federal? We, up until this last year, did not, but it wasn't because we didn't want to, it's because we didn't apply. We weren't ready. We had to kind of restructure and rebuild. So this last year, yes, we received one grant from the West Virginia Coalition to End Homelessness, uh, and they are going to be providing thus the capability of providing uh, a shelter and the ability to have peer counselors and have people work with people who are homeless 
all all year round. Um, where heretofore our homeless shelter was from November to March. So beginning of July 1st, we're really excited. We're going to be able to do this all year round. And somebody needs to be in the shelter as much when it's 100 degrees outside as they do when it's 5 degrees outside. Sure. So what were those folks doing the rest of the year? Um, They were on their own because we didn't have the resources to take care of them. Was there any other options in the county? Nope. So you didn't have anything like when in Martinsburg, there's the rescue mission, which there are many people who are there. And we work with the rescue mission. We work with Epic and uh, lots of different organizations, but they each have their own niche on how they do things. And some people just don't fit in those niches or they're out of room. Uh, and the biggest thing that we have in our county is that when you have children, it's really hard to find a place to stay, especially if you've been kicked out of your house for whatever reason. If you're a man with children, there's absolutely no place to go. If you're a woman... With, Why is that? Because there aren't any shelters that will take men with children. It's fairly unusual. Yeah, but it happens. Sure. <clears throat> Theoretically, to protect the women who, with children who are there? Yeah. Um, whatever the rules are. Okay. So there's lots of things for... There, there's places for children. There's places for women with children. Uh there's very few places for women with teenagers, uh, and there's no place for man with children. So it's just it's it's fascinating how things have worked out. Do you have a? <clears throat> we deal here at the station. We talk to a lot of people who do what you do and adjacent to what you do, Pastor Tim and others. And it feels like there's a lot of this going on in Berkeley and Jefferson County and Martinsburg. But that's where we are. Do you have a feel? Is is this throughout the state? Are, is there a you in in Morgan County and Mingo County and and Kanawha County just throughout the state? Is this or are people traveling here seeking the services that are local? Uh, you've asked about four questions. I know. So let me let me try to okay winnow it down some. Let me just say my respects to Pastor Tim. He does a fantastic yes. job, and we partner with him on a lot of things. So he's a great guy, and we love their program. Um, One interesting fact that I learned this last year, which blew me away, is that there are more homeless school children in Jefferson County than there is in any other county in West Virginia, which is fascinating. I don't know why that is. Partially, it's because it's hard to live here and work here. Uh, If you, you know, Jefferson County is a big bedroom community. It has a lot of nice houses, but the prices are going up. So just to get a house right now, it's $1,200, $1,300 a month for a basic house. And if you only make $40,000 a year, you can't afford it. All right. And if you lose your job, you're you're done. So there's a lot of people who are right on that edge. And as we go through and and see the economic downturns and see how much uh, groceries and just rents go up, uh, the people also are coming down. So we get calls from Jefferson and Berkeley County Schools on a regular basis saying, hey, we just got a kid who uh, we found he's sleeping in a car. Can you help him uh, and his family? And say, of course, we'll do what we can. And that's what we do. How many kids go through that, Keith? Any idea? I don't know. Uh, as I, the, the, According to the federal statistics, there's somewhere between 700 and 1,000 children in Jefferson County who are who are defined as homeless. I see. I, and then there's how many kids, there's uh, what, 9,000 students in Jefferson County? Something like that. Right. I, I'm not good on that. that I want to go back to this this um, theoretical kid. I mean, the, the example you used, the school calls and, and you've got this family. What do you do in that circumstance? Well, then we, we, have, we bring them in and we either meet with the parents or the parents. Um, we immediately try to get them a motel room because there's no place for them to go but there aren't a lot of motel rooms there aren't uh last year we spent about forty fifty thousand dollars on motel rooms because there was no shelter to put people with children into um now there there are some but they're very few uh, and they're none in jefferson county so we're it and so we would go out of our way to make sure that they didn't have to stay out in the cold it is hard to believe in 2024 that with, with, if, if not for you folks putting a kid in a motel room, that there is nothing the Jefferson County Commission, we just had Steve Stolfer on, has done or the schools have done to establish some sort of help for those kids. It's hard to believe that prior to you doing what you're doing, they may have just wandered the streets. 
So we work very closely with Jefferson County Schools, and Steve Stoller's a friend of mine. So uh, we work together, but Jefferson County does not have a social services department. Um, so they, they just don't have one. We, um, working with Bob Trainer, the mayor of Charlestown, about three years ago, he wrote, uh, he had the mayor's select committee on homelessness, and they issued a report. And one of the reports that, it, one of the points in that report was that they needed to hire someone at the county level who had the county voice and authority to start going around the state and saying, hey, we have problems too, not just Connor County or you know Morgan County or something else. We also are an important part. Uh, and in fact, they did do that this last year. And she's been very successful, which is why we have now been successful in getting more grants. And I just want to give a shout out, for instance, sure. to uh, Senators Manchin and Capito. Um, they put us through for a million dollar uh, congressionally directed fund to build a permanent shelter. So we're going to be building the permanent shelter this year. Well, that's great. How many beds do you anticipate? Well, we'll have 18 uh, normal beds, but we're also going to be building a shelter for children, families with children. So it'll be like a little motel suite with four rooms, and we'll be able to handle four families. So that's our start, but it's going to be something that's brand new, and it's it's going to be fantastic. Like dormitory style living, basically. The uh, adult shelter will be more or less. It's called um, trauma informed design. Mm -hmm. So it's not shelter or dormitory. We don't want to make them feel like they're living in a prison or in boot camp or something. So they'll have their own little section. Uh, but the motel space for families with children will have their own little room with shower, toilet, sink, and beds. Uh, and then they'll have a communal food preparation area. <clears throat> but we got to be honest here, with this comes uh, security issues, right? I mean, given the underpinnings of, of we talked about drug addiction and there, there are causes that lead to homelessness in some cases. What are the concerns there in terms of, of public safety? Public safety, yeah. I mean, both, both among, within the community that's being created of, of the, the, the homeless community and the community surrounding this facility. So, it, it, <clears throat> good question. Right now, our facility is downtown Charlestown. And so we constantly have a, a group of people who are there, present on the street, and people ask us, well, what about security? Well, what we're going to do is build this facility. It's out behind the racetrack. So uh, it is kind of away from downtown, but it's like within walking distance, five to ten minutes of walking distance. And we'll be able to house them. We'll be able to train them, give them basic counseling, peer counseling, and other things at this facility so that from a security standpoint, they're just not wandering around, but we're providing them something to do uh, to get back on their feet. Now, they don't have to do it, so I can't force them. But we're going to be able to provide better security because they'll be underneath one umbrella. As opposed now, they come in for services, but then they have to go back out on the street and just wander. And you call it a permanent facility. Do you mean permanent, permanent? Like per permanent. check in and stay for 15 years? Um, no, it th th depends upon the source of funding because there are some rules and regulations with each, each funding source. But because we're building it, um, what they're going to do is going to be an emergency adult shelter. So there'll be a specified period, so 90 days, let's say. I'm, I don't know. We're still finalizing right. the rules. But in that 90 days, this is not your home, but it is a place for you to stay while you get back on your feet and you move into better housing. So we'll give them a period of time to get back. And if during that period of time they choose not to be engaged, then at the end of their time, say, okay, thank you very much. Uh, you need to go find someplace else to stay. And he's raising some funds to help out with the, all the programs that he addressed here today. Keith, I've got about a minute left. Go ahead and tell him about the fundraiser again. So the fundraiser is the Voices of Classic Soul. It's Saturday, April 13th at the Ranson Civic Center. If you want tickets, please go online, jccm.us. Um, tickets are 50 or 25, 50, 75, and 150, or for corporate sponsorships, we make uh, other arrangements. And um, all the proceeds go to help us uh, provide for these services for people to get them back on their feet. Good stuff, Keith. Thanks for the work that you do. I'm going to send you out with the temptations, oh, put good. people in the mood for the big fundraiser coming up. Thank right. you very much. And again, how do you get those tickets? jccm.us. jccm.us. Keith, thanks for uh, stopping by. Good to see you again. Thank you.